Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this weekend's UFC card from a DFS perspective. And for those of you watching this for the first time, uh, we we set up the uh, the content in this manner. We have two separate videos for MMA DFS. First, uh, we do the video today, which is we're going to go over all the plays, fight by fight, who the best DFS plays are. And then Saturday, we're going to do a video completely dedicated to lineup construction because, as I've talked about countless times, the ability to come up with good plays is not that difficult. But to figure out uh, how to put them together, uh, how unique you need to be, what type of leverage you need to, to employ, depending on how the slate looks, is a completely separate skill which uh, I want to handle separately. We'll go over contest sims and things like that in the Saturday video. But today we're going to go through fight by fight and identify who the best plays are. And to do that, you know, what we're looking for, again, are fighters that have some combination of line value, um, uh, a good finishing uh, prop. In other words, they rate to finish the fight quickly and or they have a lot of wrestling up some. Now, what you'll also get sometimes are fighters that don't have all of those things, but they're going to be in a very high-paced fight where you're going to get a lot of volume. And there's, we're going to come up to an example of that pretty quickly, actually, on today's card. One thing I will discuss, though, from a lineup construction perspective is that it is a very full card. You have a 14-fight card, and you don't have to worry too much about – you know, doing a lot of funny business, you know, leaving so much money on the table, playing 2% owned fighters, whatever. It's hard enough to get the optimal. I mean, last week, the, they didn't even get the optimal. Um, you, you had to actually have the, 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 the winning lineup and then swap out Carolina for, uh, I think, for, I forget who, but hold on. <laughs> so anyway... We're going to go through fight by fight, and and there there are some good there are some good opportunities here. Overall, I mean, for a fourteen fight card, you could probably make this one smaller. You know, there there's some. I think there are plays that kind of stand out here. All right, right from the bottom up, uh, we have Daniel Marcos versus uh, uh, Ash. Uh, I keep forgetting how to pronounce his name. Ori Lang. Very very big price here, so I'm expecting. You know, for him to be playable, he's got to have a very strong inside the distance line. When you're 9,300, you've got to either be minus 110 inside the distance. I mean, maybe even more, like minus 140 inside the distance. Or minus 110 inside the distance, plus a lot of takedown upside. And Daniel Marcos has terrible metrics. here. He's inside the distance line is plus 230 or something with no takedown upside, really. So he is a complete pass, here, as is his opponent. Uh, Ori Lang just doesn't win often enough for openers, and he doesn't really have a great inside the distance line, and he doesn't have a lot of takedown upside. And Marcos probably doesn't rate to be that popular. So there's really no reason to play anybody from this fight. Uh, okay, so this is an interesting one. Heider Emil versus Ferdy Garcia. Ferdy Garcia taking the fight off of out of you know, four days notice or something like that. And you look at the price, Emil is like minus 190. His DraftKings price is a pretty reasonable 8,700. And this is an example of something I just alluded to before. When you look at his inside the distance line, Emil, he, it's not like that great. I mean, it's, uh, what is this? Meal inside the distance, like plus 260 or something like that. And he's not really a pure wrestler, but when you look at his fights, he operates at an extremely high pace in, in all of his fights. So I think that's something that might be overlooked by the public here. And it might even be overlooked by the projection models. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. But I, mean, I know what I saw. And Every one of his fights, at least I've seen, is operates at a very frenetic pace. And when you have Garcia coming off of, you know, coming in off four days' notice or whatever it is, that's that's a rough spot 
to take against a guy who pushes an extremely high pace, who's well west rested and trained for his debut that he's been looking forward to for a long time. So I think he's going to be extremely strong. Uh, is it possible that he's not highly owned because of the weak inside the distance line and he doesn't really have that kind of significant wrestling upside? Maybe. I mean, if so, he's going to be a really, really strong player. All right. Uh, Zach Palga versus uh, Bogdan Guskov. Mid-range fight, 8,400 versus 7,800. I think these are light heavyweights, I think. And if there's anything, there's probably some money line for Guskov. I, I, I figured that he was going to take a little bit of it. So he does have some money line uh, uh, equity here. In addition to that, you look at his inside the distance line, it's actually really strong. It's Palga, excuse me, Guskov inside the distance is plus 140 for a $7,800 fighter. That's like kind of elite. So he's an extremely strong play. And then you look at Palga as well. I mean, he doesn't have, you know, the best reputation because he didn't knock out Jordan Wright, whoever he knocks out. He's a lot of decisions on his resume. But the fact is that he does have a pretty decent inside the distance line for 8,400. So this could be one of those cases where, while the $7,800 fighter certainly looks a lot better, it's possible that he becomes a really high-owned underdog, which makes Pagua a decent bit of leverage. In either case, I, I do like both sides of this fight. Definitely... Uh, Guskov. Guskov is the better play. But I think that both sides of this fight are very playable. So we're going to start off with Hamil and Guskov in our kind of like phantom build here. All right, we have Jeremiah Wells versus Max Griffin. So 8,500 versus 7,700. I'm expecting to see about minus 160. It's about right. The inside the distance line for Wells is plus 220. I mean, not the best. I mean, not not bad, though. Griffin inside the distance, like plus 300, not the best. Wells, though, does have some takedown upside. Uh, he displayed that against Semmelsberger a couple back. So I think that does make up for it. So I definitely think that he's a, he's a pretty good play. So Wells, pretty good mid-range play. And I don't really see the upside really for Max Griffin. He doesn't really have the wrestling upside inside the distance line, like minus plus three fifty for that price. That's really not for me. So let's, uh, let's start our, what could be our mid range build here. Uh, we'll put Wells in here as well. Devin Clark versus Marcin Prachniow, 8,900 versus 7,300. This price fight's probably going to be a fade, but we'll just take a look at it. So Clark at 8,900, he needs to get to have an inside the distance line of about plus, you know, maybe 100 or so. And it's really poor. I mean, plus 230. So unless he's got a bunch of takedowns uh, to make up for that, he's probably a fade. Cratch now is inside the distance line is hopeless. So that's probably a fade. Let's take a look and see if Devin Clark has... I mean, I guess he's got three takedowns a couple of fights back. It's seven takedowns. I guess he could do it. But I don't think Pratchnow has really been taken down all that much. So if anything, I would, say Devin, I would say Devin Clark is a fringe play. But it's probably the whole fight's just kind of fast. Uh Luma Lukbumi versus Bruna Brazil. Is it going to be another week of girl power? Last week, remember, I faded both of the top salaried women's fighters and one of them smashed right in my eyeball um am i gonna make that mistake again maybe i mean you look at you look at her look boomy minus 275 i guess she's 9200 or so 9400 you know, 9400 you need a finish and takedowns you know this is a this is rough business i mean i guess she can get takedowns that's possible Two, four, one. So okay, so that's going to be probably your path to victory. So I guess she's she's in play, you know, because when these 
female fighters get it going and the other one can't stop the takedowns, you can rack up points. Big, big hurry. Because all those little pitter patter strikes add up as regular as, as as strikes. You don't need to be significant really to rack up points. So she's probably gonna be really low owned. Uh we'll we'll put her in for now. I I, I can't imagine you actually playing her at ninety four hundred. But every week it seems as though these 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 high priced women fighters just that have the grappling upside just get it going, you know, and, and make those points just go crazy. Um Brazil just really nothing to offer. Terrible money line. No inside the distance line. Worth mentioning. Plus eight hundred. So if it's either favorite or pass here. Carlos Parates or Pirates were <laughs> Against Trevin Giles, um, he is. What's his price? Oh, we'll get back to Oki in a second. Sorry, um, he's ninety two hundred. So we're expecting for, so for Prates to be playable, he's got to have an inside the distance line of at least minus one ten, at least. So we'll take a look at it. Prat Prates, however you pronounce it. Yeah, look at this. Minus 140. All right, this is good. All right, we like this one. So Carlos Prates has a very good inside the distance line. Certainly better than look boomy, but does not have the takedown upside. That's the only thing. Um, but he's definitely playable. He's one of several guys in this price range which are playable. Looks like a very, very strong play. Trevin Giles, the only thing I will say about him is that if Prates or Prates, whatever, becomes uh, popular. He's going to have leverage because aside from that, doesn't really have a lot of upside. You look at his inside the distance line, it's plus 600 or so. It's just not going to be good enough. Is it possible he gets takedowns? I mean, I really doubt it. He did have two a couple of fights ago. I don't know. All right, uh, going back here, you have Oki versus uh, Kwamba. You have a replacement fighter. I presume that he's going to be 100 to 1 or whatever. Let's take a look at this. Um, where is it? There's no line yet. Hmm. All right, so I guess we have to kind of take, we have to wait on that one then. But what we're looking for is that, I mean, for Oki to be playable, I mean, he's got to have an inside the distance line of what? I mean, minus 300, but it's not even that. He's got to, for him to get there, he's got he's got to get there in the first round, you know? So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at an inside the distance line round one of minus 110, okay? Round two is not going to work. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, Rodolfo Vieira versus Armin Petrosian. So very standard type um, DFS fight. You know, you have one guy who's dependent on grappling to win and the other guy who's dependent on striking to win. And in such cases, you know, you usually take the grappler. You know, because unless... The striker has a really, really strong inside the distance line. His decision wins just don't score that well. Um, we'll take a look at the at those lines, and I, I'm pretty sure Petrosian is was he plus three hundred maybe inside the distance. Let's see, a plus three hundred inside the distance and and an eight K. That's really not that good. Um, is he going to be able to put a lot of volume up? That's the other variation, I guess. I mean, 90 significant strikes here, that's okay. Dobson, 118, that's okay. Rodriguez, 127. I mean, 81 points is just not going to be good enough. So it's just it's not a good play. On the other hand, you have Vieira, who has takedown upside, who's got submission upside. We'll look at his inside the distance line, for example. I bet you it's better than Trojans. At least 
I mean, look at this. Vieira inside distance, like plus 160. I mean, this is an elite play. So put him in. Where do you go? Vieira. Mark uh, Mark Johnson or Michael Johnson versus Darius Flowers, another mid-range fight. Let's take a look at the inside the distance line here. We're looking for about plus 200 on both of them. I think we're going to get it. Yeah, Johnson inside the distance, plus 150, very strong. Flowers inside the distance, plus 180, not as strong. But, but, but Flowers does have some takedown upside. So... I mean, you put those two things together. I think that they're both pretty good plays here. So I would, I would probably take both sides of this fight. So, like for example, we we could put flowers in here, and we could almost have a lineup already. Um, and that's playing practice. I and mean, maybe we save money and play somebody else later or something like that. We'll get there. But I think flowers decent play, and I think Michael Johnson's a decent play as well. Um, okay, uh, Brad Severus versus uh, Gregory Rodriguez. I'll tell you, I was a little surprised when I saw this inside distance line because I thought it was going to be better. Um, I, I just presume that Rodriguez always finishes people. And I was expecting to see Rodriguez minus like 140 inside the distance and it'd be basically a lock, but he's only like plus 170. Very surprising to me. Um, but he does have some takedowns to go along with it. I mean, look, every one of his fights finishes, right? Let's take a look at it. Hold on. Um, Rodriguez. KO, 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 KO. I mean, he's never won a decision. But here we go. Here's a decision against Tudorovic. KO, KO. I mean, this is seems pretty ridiculous. So I think that this, this line is bad. I think that it's going to change. I think he's going to be popular. But he's an elite play. I mean, like he's the combination of inside the distance line, which is going to be improved, just has to. Plus the takedown upside. This looks good to me. Um, and also, just so you know, I mean, Tavares is probably in play too, not because of anything, not because of his inside the distance line, because we look at it. Was he a plus 500 or so? Let's see. Um, plus 500. But if Rodriguez can be really popular, then you might be able to get leverage. But uh, Tavares is definitely a fringy underdog at best. All right. Uh, Brysek versus Pateria, 8,800 versus 7,400. So we're expecting about, you know, minus 190. And we're going to be looking for an inside the distance line of about you know, plus 110 or so. Take a look at it. Right check. Inside the distance, minus 160. Lock. You know what I mean? Like, this is it's an amazing play. Right? I mean, this, this is better than any of these others that we've already talked about. Probably even better than Rodriguez, right? This is kind of nuts. So what does that mean? So if he's a great play, what do you make of Pateria? Now this is, again, this is more for the lineup construction video, but the best plays really in GPPs for UFC cards are opponents of the best play, as long as that opponent is a decent player. The reason for that is if you're the best play, people are going to play. You. That's just the way it goes. So if everybody's going to play Brechak, which I imagine they will, that if you can make a case for Pateria at all, then you're getting a good amount of leverage in a spot that, that's reasonable. And when you look at his inside the distance line, at plus, was it 200? Plus 220? That's pretty freaking good. You know, for 7,400. I mean, that's an amazing, this is actually an amazing looking underdog here. So I think both of these both of these fighters look really, really good. Dan Ige versus Andre Feely, 8,600, 7,600. You have Dan Ige, who is basically a striker. 
So his inside the distance line is going to be the sole determinant of the absence of a lot of pace. Whether we can play him at his inside the distance line is very poor, plus 250. Feely has a very weak inside the distance line as well. And I do think that he does have takedown upside, though. I mean, you have to really have some vision. But like, like Almeida, he didn't need it. He got the knockdown. He did get a reversal against Nathaniel Wood. He did take down Aljo, which isn't easy. Brito, he got starched early. Pinedo, he got one takedown. He's not getting, he's not taking down Bryce Mitchell. Then against Charles Jordan, five takedowns. Yusuf, three takedowns. I don't know these guys. Marais, I guess, knocked him out in the first round. So he does have the skill set, you know? So I think he's actually kind of sneaky. And as somebody in my Discord pointed out, no one's picked. So I don't think he's going to be popular at all. You're not going to get much leverage against Ige. That's the problem. But I kind of like this one. And then in the main event, you have Joe Pfeiffer versus um, Jack Hermanson. Five-round fight. Um, so the first thing I will say is that Hermanson is probably going to be a popular underdog. You know, his, uh, you know, 7200 for his at his price at five rounds is uh is just not bad. And every once in a while he gets um he gets the takedown game going. You know, he couldn't get it going against Curtis or Strickland, not surprising, but against other guys he got it going. So I think he's gonna be a good underdog for, for that reason. I mean his I think his win condition is gonna be probably a decision. And I don't think he's going to win a decision unless he gets some takedowns. So I think Hermanson is probably a really good underdog here. And as far as Pfeiffer goes, the only thing that's stopping me from playing is his ownership. So I guess it's not a big deal. Look, round one KO, round two KO, round one. I mean, the thing is that he doesn't really need the five rounds. That's the only problem. That he's, there, people are giving him credit for, ooh, he's got five rounds to work with, but he doesn't, hasn't really ever needed them. We really have to treat him like it's a three-round fight. And then when you look at it, he kind of passed the test because you have Pfeiffer inside the distance, like minus 160. He's the best inside the distance line guy overall. And usually the problem I have with those inside the distance lines in the in the main events is people forget that those those finishes can show up in like the late rounds, which don't score well. But I feel as though if Pfeiffer wins, it's going to be a two well, one one or two round fight. So I think Pfeiffer is a very, very strong favorite. So I think the main event is good. I'll just review. Um, Guskov Pagua fights good. Emil, I think, is a strong play. Wells, I think, is a strong play. Pateria Breichak, strong fight overall. Vieira, strong play. Flowers Johnson, strong play overall. Look, Boomy could be low owned, decent favorite. Oki, you have to watch the the the, the, the inside the distance line. I can't imagine. 9500 being a good price for him, but we'll see. Prates and G-Rod are both good 9K guys, but the best of them all is the bride check. Not the bride check. The, uh, yeah, I guess the bride check is better than all of them, and which makes Poteria good leverage. And then I think Feely is sneaky, and then both sides of the main event. And uh, the rest of the fights are pretty much fades. Uh, that'll do it for now. We're going to do a contrarian betting breakdown tomorrow, and then we will do a lineup construction video on Saturday. Good luck, everybody.